Hello and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions with your host Brian. We are going to continue on with this week's theme of brutality, exploring some of the heaviest, most extreme types of music, primarily as this week has showcased in the realm of metal. Today we are going to be looking at the infamous Infant Annihilator. Uh, we're going to be looking at the track Blasphemian from the Elysian Grandival Galeriac. Probably mispronounced that. Uh, I, I know of this band only through word of mouth. I don't think I've ever listened to a single song from them, but I know I'm in for something pretty intense. Let's dive in, see what's going on. Like sirens. <laughs> Very tasteful ride. Very cool melodic drumming here while keeping that beat on the snare. diversity in the vocal deliveries as well. Interesting. 
We hit those 30 second notes on the bass kicks and I was like there's uh you know there's room for another increase uh he didn't go there because of course 30 second note bass kicks are just ridiculous I was like there's no way he's gonna go faster than this but there's room for it we were upgrading every bar and we were only on bar of seven of presumably eight. A lot of phrases work within even numbers. So I was like, there's still another bar. Is he going to go faster? Of course he didn't. Like, that's just... The 30-second note is as is, is extreme as it is. But <laughs> I was really scared. I was like, how is this dude going to do it? All right. Um, You know, honestly, this wasn't that bad. Kind of like... Um, what did we listen to? Was it, uh, yesterday? Day? Oh, it was day before with Blood Incantation. I don't know if I'm just becoming more numb to this extreme side of metal or, or what, but, you know, Infinite Annihilator, I've, I've had them placed up here as like this super extreme band. Just don't get into them, Brian. Uh, they're just going to be terrible, you know? terribly brutal in like the best worst way if, if you're looking for it it's awesome if you're not it's just gonna haunt you for your life uh and you know this wasn't that bad now the thing is too though is that this came out in 2016 and they also had an album out in 2012 so this style of music is quite a bit older than what I'm about to reference here. But I heard this 
after listening to Lorna Shore's new stuff after Will Ramos came on as their vocalist. And I think if I had just been thrown into this band before being exposed to that side of Deathcore, this would have been a lot for me. Uh, I think I still would have enjoyed parts of it. There are some very interestingly melodic sections to this track. But I do think having a frame of reference for Deathcore helped me find this to, to be a bit more palatable. Now, you know, <laughs> y'all just watched the reaction. You saw my physical reaction to it. Uh, you know, there's only so many analytical notes I can talk about uh, positively that, well, I guess, let me put it this way. No matter how many positive notes or thoughts I could have throughout this that I verbalize, I think seeing my physical reaction to some of these sounds, it's going to show where I kind of sit with this song. <laughs> um, I, I can kind of come around to it analytically, critically, mentally. Uh, there is some cool composition in here, and overall it is very well done, but it is far and away not my cup of tea <laughs> so and i i'm, I'm going to say a lot of positive things here i'm going to have a lot of praise for this song musically i don't want anyone to walk away from this thinking oh he's a deathcore fan let's give him more <laughs> i found this more palatable than expected but it's still that is an abrasive track uh, and I, I just don't want any confusion there. So I'm just putting that here as a preface to the praise, which I suppose is what we should get into next. It actually starts out really nicely, which I think is interesting because uh, what was that debut song that, uh, well, now I can't even think of that. Lorna Shore did. Um, dun, 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 dun. Oh, I checked out Lorna Shore before Will Ramos came on. Death Portrait? I don't remember that at all. The first song I remember listening to them was To the Hellfire. And I don't want this to be like a really big comparison between uh, these two bands. But uh, I, I, do, I do just want to bring this up real quick. Is that... Uh, Dang, where was I going with that? Oh, yeah, the intro. Right, 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 yeah. So To the Hellfire also starts off with a really light melodic intro, a little bit of a guitar solo that provides some melodic writing before throwing you into, you know, the, the, the deep end of the pool, the, the deepest, the ocean, mm -hmm. right in the middle of it. Blasphemian does the same thing. And I was actually kind of lulled in a little bit. I had forgotten about my preconceptions about the band and was taken on a little bit of a journey with the great bass work, the cool melody from the guitars, the light melodic drumming that we got a little taste of. It's a very cool intro. And just like Into the Hellfire... Boom, you're thrown right into it. You get this really cool intro, and then you get <laughs> the metal. Um, and from there, it's just, uh, we had really fast 16th note picking come in as the transition with the uh, with a harsher electric guitar tone. Really quick playing, that pulls us into the A section proper, getting out of that intro. Um, and I had made a note about this. I don't remember what I had said about it, but there was something very interesting going on. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It was that the right side guitar was giving us our melody. Granted, it's like 16th note riffage all the time, just constant playing, but there's a melody in there. But the left side guitar was just chugging along with these heavy accents like, don't, 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 don't. Dun, dun. And it's like, it's very cool hearing the back and forth here where we have melody and texture. Uh, I thought that was pretty cool. 
Uh, but as soon as I had brought that up, we were already out of this section, moving on into the next one, going to the next idea. And that's kind of what this song felt like to me. I was trying to pick up as many landmarks as I could. This is the melodic passage. This is the split guitar passage. This is the brutal bass kick passage. This is the melodic passage. And the thing was, is I don't think we ever looped back on anything. I can't really point to a specific section of the song where I say, oh, that's definitely a chorus. It's a repeated idea. Now, maybe lyrically, there's some repeated ideas in here. Maybe when we get to, well, we're not going to get to the lyrics. I'll get to that later. But maybe in the lyrics, there is a verse chorus, verse chorus format in the poetry of the song. But musically, I think this is rather linear. It, uh... It kind of surprised me just because I don't really expect death metal or any sort of core music to really do that unless you're talking, you know, tech death, progressive metal. Is there progressive death core? There has to be progressive death core, uh, which I guess this would be technically. It's a it's a linear song and it does a lot of things. It's definitely progressive in a way. But yeah, so it just kind of rattled me a little bit. By the time I got to uh, something I wanted to talk about, we were already changing, and that's kind of how the song went. Every time I found something cool, we were moving on to a new idea already, and we never came back to those things for me to point them out again early enough for y'all to listen. So, you know, if you're ever curious, that's what the rewind button is for, and toss it back five or ten seconds and try to hear what I was listening to. But yeah, I mean, like, right from the bat, Right, right off the, right from the beginning. Melodic intro, harsh contrast, immediately moving on to new ideas. Like it's just rapid fire ideas, and that's what the song ends up feeling like to me in a lot of ways. Just always moving on to the next thing. Now the next thing though could be a, a plethora of ideas, and we actually heard quite a few of them in this track. Uh, a, a few ideas that is. Um, there's parts of this that are more melodic. There's parts of these that are a bit less intense. There's parts of this song that's just pure brutality, going for the heaviest sound that they can. Uh, and that comes from all of the instruments. The bass gets to show off a little bit, but the low end of the bass really fills out some of those really big meaty sections. Uh, we have the more melodic driven parts, like when the guitars come in together and play these duets, and they're kind of beautiful in places, taking that melodic writing that we heard from the intro and putting it into that metal sphere um, and creating something a bit stronger. Like we even had the guitar solo in the middle of the song somewhere, like four minutes in. We had vocals on top of it, but the guitar was soloing, starting off a bit more legato style, holding out some notes using vibrato, and then moving into shred after that. There's plenty of places in here where you can find strong melody writing, but it's not just in the guitars or the bass. We also have melodic drumming in here. Now, there is definitely quite a few sections where it's completely rigid as far as the rhythm is concerned from the drums, pure 16th notes, uh, blast beats, double bass kicks, just really creating this wall of sound machine gun fire kind of thing going on. Really wanting to lean into a a singularity of sound and a repetition of that single sound over and over and over rather than creating something uh, groovy or melodic. But again, there's the other side of the spectrum too. There's some really cool stuff in here, even on the faster side. Yeah, the drums do slow down a couple places and we do get some really cool movement there, whether it is moving towards a groovy idea or a melodic one. But we also had a section that was super fast. I think the drummer was just constant 16th notes, but he was all over the kit moving between the snares to the drums to all of well the snares to the toms to all of the cymbals working the bass kick in there and creating something that felt rather fluid yes rhythmically totally rigid but as far as pitches what kind of sounds we were hearing that was a bit more melodic and it was using the whole kit rather than like we heard earlier with the blast beats just snare and bass and, and a cymbal those three instruments 16th notes on all of them 
just that full rigidity of sound and rhythm. This is a little bit different. We have different sounds in here. So we have, uh, I'm loading, give me a second. We have the variety of sounds from the guitars, the bass, the drums, but even the vocals. This is really impressive. And this was one of the first moments um, that kind of clicked with me with uh, uh, Will Ramos. And, uh, you know, again, I, I've, I've seen comments about this before. Anytime deathcore comes up, especially vocals like this, I bring up Will. I feel like some people get a little, a little miffed about that for some reason. But Will was my introduction to these types of vocals really cemented uh, a, a, a moment in my mind, in my history. Um, so I'm going to bring up Will again. And y'all are just going to have to deal with it because that is the only way I can understand some of this vocal technique. Um, but yeah, so like I hear a lot of vocal variety in here, just like I did with Into the Hellfire. And once again here, I mean, it's still it still kind of blows my mind right? That somebody can make all of these sounds. We have these high shrill screams, we have these low guttural growls, and we kind of have everything in between. In fact, right there at the end, it was like the last 10 or 15 syllables or whatever, the song was slowing down. We kind of had this, like, the tempo slowly coming to a crawl. We have these heavy beats. Doom, doom, doom. Doom. And the notes are getting lower on the guitars, but the pitches, the, the perceived pitches of the harshes are also decreasing as well. We start with a higher shrill sound and we kind of bring it down until we're at this really low guttural, just growling. It's, it's almost like a rumble at that point. And the vocalist just hits all of these, these notes very cleanly. It's uh, it's really impressive to hear all of that, but there's also so many different textures to the harshes as well. Some are a bit more wider, some are more narrow, some are more nasally, some are more full-bodied. Uh, I've come to understand a lot of this has to do with mouth shape. Uh, I know some people will place their tongue in different places of their mouth to make the air go around it in different ways, and that shapes the sound too. There's a lot of cool things you can do with compressed vocals. I don't know how to do any of it, but I do find it very impressive and we can hear a ridiculous amount of control and understanding of harsh vocals from this vocalist. And again, as I pointed out earlier, this came out prior to Into the Hellfire before Will Ramos really put his, uh, you know, his flag in the map or however that phrase goes. Um, it's just, I always find it impressive. But we have this sort of melodic quality to the harshes too. And this is what really stands out to me. Is that as aggressive and abrasive and disgusting as this song can be. It's kind of beautiful too. The solos pull out of the, uh, the uh, five note chords. Why can't I think of that word? Um in order to achieve a little bit more harmonic clarity. And we actually get to hear that pretty much anytime the guitars do a solo or a lead melody, we kind of get away from that and explore an expanded harmonic palette. Uh, it sounds really nice, has a little bit of a classical influence to it, but not a lot. It's kind of a stereotypic, st stereotypical expanded metal sound at this point. But it works well here and kind of pulling outside of that gnarly harmony and exploring something with a little bit more beauty in the palette, allowing them to paint something a little bit more uh, gorgeous and melodic out of it. Pentatonic, that's the word I want. <laughs> um, yeah, chord with five notes, pentatonic. Um, and so, you know, there, there's just... There's a lot of really gorgeous moments in here that you kind of have to squint past the brutality to hear, but it's it's there. And I find that really engaging. It's it's also what sort of drew me to Into the Hellfire. Not every Lorna Shore song has really grabbed me. In fact, I don't think any of them have since that track, but that one really worked for me because of all of the melodic components to it. And that's exactly what's working for me here. 
Now, on the other side of that equation, though, is is the brutality. And we've already talked about the blast beats, 16th note rigidity, uh, the heavy low tones from the growling and the bass guitar, but there's another component to this, too, which is the use of space. This is deathcore, and so we do have a lot of death metal in here. I think that's pretty clear, especially in the more solo-y sections where the guitars take uh, lead melody writing rather than lead texture writing. But we do have some sections in here that are purely based around texture, of creating big, heavy sounds. What I find interesting about these is that they kind of go towards uh, the hardcore breakdown sound. But they do it in a, a little bit of different of a way. I, I think the breakdown has become very formulaic, where you kind of find a, a low note and chug on it, maybe create some uh, rhythmic uh, juxtaposition, a little gentiness if you want to get a little spicy with your breakdown. But the idea is primarily to create a groove on a single low note. This band says, okay, we're going to do a breakdown. We're going to pick some really low tones here, and we're going to all emphasize the same time, but we're going to kind of get rid of the groove element. And so we're just going to kind of all come together to hit these random parts of the beat. And I find this interesting because they didn't just do it once. This is like a thing in the song that happens multiple times. Now, the last time they do it feels like a gradual retardando, a slowing down of the tempo. That would make sense to me because while I don't know the exact speed that we are reducing the tempo, I can feel the gradual shift. But there's quite a few sections in this song where I can't really find the rhythm, the, the meaning, the, the, the method of when they are hitting these accents. And I think that's kind of the point because between the accents... Are silence. And in that silence is usually the vocals. Loud and clear. Well, they're clearly the vocals. I can't tell you any word that he's ever said though. <laughs> um, but they take up so much space here. And sometimes even the vocals will not say anything for a moment to create dead silence in the middle of an idea. And I think this use of space and silence against the heavy noise of the track is really interesting as well. It allows these moments to feel more impactful by contrast. We now know what it feels like to have no sound and then to get hit with full volume, which I don't know if you were looking at those volume bars on the left, but they were just capped out the entire time. Just full volume. <laughs> it's really difficult to undersell. Is that how I want to say it? Anyways, it, it, you, you can't describe. It's something you have to feel. To just say that the volume's maxed all the time, I don't think necessarily sells the feeling of the sonic assault of this track in places. So, I mean, there's, there's that too. Um, but yeah, just the use of the silence, I think, works really well to take us from zero to max. But it also gives it a chance for the vocals to shine a little bit. And we do hear some interesting layering on those, whether it is a stack in the middle or that one point towards the end of the song when we had the stack in the middle and the very distant reverbery harshes on the sides. I thought that was a neat uh, idea. Um... Yeah, and you really get to hear some of the nuance of the vocals. Now, I do wish the vocal production was a little bit better. For a lack of uh, technical description, it often sounds like the microphone is in his mouth while he's doing these harsh vocals, rather than just outside of his mouth. And so it does end up feeling very clipped, and it loses a lot of outside clarity. It, it loses some of the unique characteristics of these vocal tones as uh you know the sound is just all right that, what clipping is is when the volume is too loud of what's being recorded that it ends up uh distorting and what that distortion is it's pretty much the same thing as compression or overdrive is it's sort of a flattening out of the sound 
So you're losing some of those uh, details uh, as it flattens out um, and, and sort of condenses down the information. It's, uh, I think it's used to great effect here. It, it works at selling this very larger than life idea of vocals, but from a critical standpoint, I would love to hear the technical details that got removed in the recording process, or maybe even after the recording process, it could be that the vocals were further overdriven or compressed uh, in a way that removed those as well and, and made them feel bigger. Whatever the case is, I would love to hear the, if available, just the raw vocals here. Uh, unclipped, untouched, just, you know, whatever they recorded, hopefully at a high enough quality, because I, I find interest in that. It's just, it's neat to hear how a vocalist, uh, in, well, I also like uh, vocal videos too, to kind of see the muscles and how they manipulate their mouth and, and throat muscles and all this stuff. But even just being able to hear it is neat too. Because like I said, there is a lot of variety in the vocal delivery here. And I feel like some of the nuance is being removed in the process of making this hyper gnarly. But I think that's, you know, honestly, other than just being a, an aggressive track that is not my cup of tea, I think that's really my only criticism on it. Um, is that I wish there was a little more clarity on that. Just a little bit of praise for everyone in here. The bass had some really cool lines in here. I think that's awesome. The bass gets overshadowed in a lot of metal bands. And for <laughs> something like this that I've kind of heard was like the worst of the worst of, of death chords, don't touch it. I find it really interesting that the bass is kind of present in the mix and has some really cool riffs. Uh, the guitarists, just general, how do you not get fatigued playing this? But also, how do you make something so gnarly and then turn around and make something so beautiful a moment later? The vocalist, I've pretty much waxed poetically about their diversity and, and delivery uh, and, and all of that. But you know, the final thing is the drummer. Dude, um, 30 second note bass kicks. I think that's all I really need to say about that. I don't think I've ever heard bass kicks that fast in the five years I've been doing this. Just blows my mind i mean I, i'm honestly if somebody in the in the comments says yeah he's actually doing 16th notes but they're triggered which basically means that uh you know for every one he hits uh it records two with a, a midi drum kit or, or yeah yeah a, a virtual drum kit right uh i wouldn't even be mad about that because the 16th notes are still going to be pretty fast so, I mean, like, maybe it's possible to do this, right? The human body is phenomenal. It gets pushed to its limits all the time, and then somebody decides to break that limit. That is just what humans do. And so, someone tells me that it's all natural. He's playing at that speed with his feet. I'll believe it. But it is still, like, a ridiculous thing to do as a drummer. At this speed. At this, Oh, my God. It's just, it's bonkers. So yeah, a little bit of praise for everyone here. And, uh, you know, overall, uh, kind of a neat composition too. Lots of contrast, lots of diversity, meeting both ends of the spectrum. The filthy, the gnarly, the, dis the disgusting, and, and the beautiful and melodic. It's uh, not a band I want to dive into, but I, I can't appreciate what's going on here. And normally here we would do lyrics, but uh, I'm not going to do that for this band, probably ever. Uh, I've been told specifically for this reaction, dude, don't do it. <laughs> you don't need to put yourself through that. And I've put myself through some pretty bad lyrics in the past, and I always kind of walk away a bit emotionally numb after them. And so I'm just going to follow that advice this time. But... Um, I did do a little bit of research. I didn't want to see the lyrics themselves, but I did kind of want to know what the song was about. Maybe just knowing the theme of it, I could like pair something back to the music. And uh, I mean, the one sentence description I got of the song is basically that it, it takes their band name and writes a song about that. 
So, yeah, I'm pretty happy to read the lyrics there. Um, I don't really know how I could pair that back to the music, the, the brutality of it. Sure, the gnarliness, sure, but the more melodic parts? I find it really difficult to uh, talk about any song about infant annihilation and find a beautiful part of that. <laughs> That's just, my, my brain can't do that. So, I'm just going to leave it right there. These are my thoughts. Infant Annihilator is blasphemian. What do you think of this track? Is there anything that stands out to you? Anything that you'd like to add on to what I said or correct me on? Maybe you just want to give me your own thoughts, opinions, and perspectives on this song. Put all that stuff down in the comment section. Above that, in the description box, you can find a link to Linktree. It takes you here. You can find links to my music, ways to support the channel, a link to the Discord server, and so much more. Above that, if you could, like, subscribe, and ring the bell. I greatly appreciate all three of those. Thanks for sticking around with me on this one, I suppose. <laughs> I think this is probably going to be the gnarliest, brutal song for the week. And I think it's wild that even then I still found some cool stuff in it. So I, I appreciate the selections so far. For the most part, I can always find something uh, beautiful within them. I think Converge is the only one that was like pure gnarliness. But it was short enough that I could appreciate it and had a cool like extra element to it. So I'll be back tomorrow. 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 9 p.m. UTC. We're going to wrap up this brutality week and see what the final track is that we explore and see if it can't continue this trend of yeah that was pretty gnarly but you know there's some part of there's some palatable parts to it that little trend that we've had going this whole week I, I'm, I'm appreciative of it <laughs> anyways until next time remember to be critical not cynical of the music you listen to have a fantastic morning afternoon or evening whenever you choose to watch my videos Thank you.